The purpose of this video is to introduce the concepts of even and odd signals. Uh, evenness and oddness of signals is actually a symmetry property, and it turns out to be important because it affects, um, it allows you to do certain things in Fourier analysis. Uh, you can tell that a, the Fourier transform of an even time signal is going to be entirely real, and the Fourier transform of an odd time signal as long as the signal is real, it's going to be imaginary. So this sort of symmetry shows up a lot in Fourier analysis and allows you to do some interesting stuff. So we'll start with the definition. An even signal is one for which x of t is equal to x of minus t. Okay, multiplying the t by the negative sign here, or adding the negative sign, conceptually is equivalent to taking a time signal. Um, let's see, we'll come up with some sort of arbitrary time signal and flipping it about the x-axis, or I'm sorry, about the point where t is equal to zero. So I flip this guy and this is actually a very bad example, and I get something that looks like this. So what I've done is this end has gone over to here, and this end has gone over to here. I flip the thing about the, the line t is equal to zero. Now the signal that I've drawn here, again this is probably not the best example to begin with, is one that is not even. An even signal might look something like this. So maybe it's just a nice rectangular pulse. And the idea is if I flip this rectangular pulse about the t is equal to zero axis, it just looks exactly the same. Okay, so that's the definition of even. Odd is x of t is equal to minus x of minus t. Okay, so an odd signal is one where if I flip it about the line t is equal to zero, it's the same as having multiplied it by negative one. So an example of an odd signal is one that looks like this. Okay, if I flip this about the line t is equal to zero, then I get something that looks like this. I multiply this dashed orange thing by negative 1, and I get back my original signal. Okay, so that's the example of an odd signal. Okay, another example of even and odd signals that you've, I'm sure, seen before is uh, the cosine, a cosine signal looks like this, more or less. And you can see as I flip this about the line t is equal to zero, um, I just, it's symmetric about that line so it looks the same. So a cosine is an even function. A sine function, on the other hand, looks more or less like this. And if I flip this about the line t is equal to zero, I get something that looks like this. If I then multiply that by negative one, I get my original signal back. So it looks like this. Sometimes you'll see this as being called anti-symmetric. Uh, this is symmetric. Okay, so those are the definitions and examples. Now it turns out that one of the most useful things about even and odd signals is that I can take any time signal and represent it as the sum of an even part and an odd part. So I'll erase all this stuff and uh, 
write out mathematically, and then we'll do some examples. Any signal x of t can be represented as an even part plus an odd part, okay, where this is obviously even, this is obviously odd. And I find out what the even and odd parts are. I get the even part by taking the signal plus its time reversed, this, or the signal time reversed, and averaging those. I get the odd part by taking the signal and subtracting its time reversed part and then multiplying by one half. Okay, so let's go through an example. This will probably make best sense if we just go straight to the example. So suppose that my x of t is a unit step function. So the unit step function is 0 for values of t less than 0 and 1 for values of t greater than 0. Okay, so now I need to find this x sub e, the even part of this signal. Well, I do that by taking, this is x of t. If I time reverse the signal, so x of minus t, well, again, time reversal just consists of flipping the signal about the line t is equal to 0. So x of minus t looks like this. Okay. Now if I add these two together, so this is going to be x of t plus x of minus t. Well, for values of t greater than 0, uh, x of t looks like this, and x of minus t is 0. So for values of t greater than 0, the sum is going to be 1. For values of t less than 0, x of minus t is 1, and x of 0, or I'm sorry, x of t is 0, so it's going to look like this. And then to multiply it by 1 half, Well, I can just put a one-half out here, and that has multiplied it by one-half. So the even part of the unit step function is just a constant one-half. And this is trivially symmetric about the line t is equal to zero. To get the um, odd part of this, I now need to get minus x of minus t. And I get that by taking the uh, x of minus t and multiplying it by minus 1. So I get a signal that looks like this. Okay. And now if I add um, x of t with minus x of minus t, I'm going to get a signal that looks like this. So for t greater than 0, this guy is pretty much 0. This guy is 1. So I get something that looks like this. For values of t less than 0, this guy is negative 1. This guy is 0. So I get something that looks like this. In x of t, um, this part out here has a value of 1. Uh, minus x of minus t, this part out here, has a value of negative 1. So when I multiply everything by 1 half, this guy's going to be 1 half, and it's going to be minus 1 half. So this is going to be 1 half x of t minus x of minus t. And again, this is x odd. And this is x even. Okay. So um, this is how you decompose the unit step function into its even and odd parts. And I guess the last thing we could do here
we'll make this fast because uh, I don't want to get too long, is confirm then that the original signal x of t is the sum of x even plus x odd. So x even is this guy, x odd is this guy, so for t greater than 1, when I add x even, which is 1 half, and x odd, which is 1 half, I get 1, which is what my original x of t looks like out here. For t less than 0, I'm adding 1 half plus negative 1 half, which is 0, which is what my original x of t is out here. Okay, so this is a short introduction to the idea behind even and odd signals, how to find the even part of a signal and the odd part of a signal, and verifying the idea that the signal itself can be expressed as the sum of its even and odd parts.